Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on antenna. For this video, I will discuss the relationship of antenna, maximum directivity, and also maximum effective area. In fact, these two terms actually are related by an equation. This video, I'm going to prove the equation. Guys, if you're keen to know more about antenna design, okay, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on antenna design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me your question through the comment. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help me by press the like button now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. Let's quickly understand the relationship between directivity and also effective area of the antenna. An antenna Okay, we talk about the maximum directivity. It actually represents its ability to focus radiate power in a specific direction, while its maximum effective area actually represents the equivalent area that it can capture electromagnetic energy. Okay, so from these two concepts, they are actually related. With higher directivity, actually generally actually lead to a larger effective area. This is what I mentioned earlier on. I will prove these two relationships with an equation. Let's come to the definition of antenna directivity. Okay, so we need to know these two things separately first. We need to know the directivity and also the effective area. Let's focus on the directivity first. The antenna directivity, they actually measure how much more concentrate the antenna radiation is in one direction as compared to isotropic antenna. Okay, so for isotropic antenna, they means that they actually radiate equally in all direction. So therefore, this directive can basically compare okay, in certain direction as compared to the isotropic antenna, how much more concentrate, then this is the definition of directivity. Coming to the relationship to the radiation pattern, okay, the directivity is in fact a property of the antenna radiation pattern. They describe the power density in a particular direction. Okay, so radiation pattern, you can concentrate on a particular direction. So this directivity actually describes how much will be the power density in a particular direction. The maximum value, okay, the maximum directivity, is the highest value of the radiation pattern, which is often expressed in decibel. What will be the factor that will affect the directivity? Firstly, on the antenna size. Okay, so later on you will know that the antenna size actually change the so-called wavelength, which affect the directivity. Also the frequency, and also the shape of all influence the directivity. Coming to a simple example of a directivity, Okay, so a large parabolic dish antenna, okay, they will have a higher directivity as compared to a small dipole antenna. Next, let's move on to the effective area. Okay, so the effective area is also known as the effective aperture. Okay, so basically this is the area that the antenna actually collect, let's say for a receiver, collect the EM wave. Okay, so basically they quantify the area of antenna that is present to an incoming electromagnetic wave. How they actually capture the electromagnetic energy. Okay, so this is the area that actually determines how much power from the incoming wave that will be captured by the receiving antenna. So what will be the relationship to directivity? Okay, the effective area is actually direct proportional to the directivity, which we are going to take a close look on one equation later on. Maximum effective area. Okay, so the maximum effective area okay, is actually the largest value of the antenna effective area over all direction. Coming to an example, okay, a larger high gain antenna will have a larger effective area 
enabling it to capture more incoming power. It makes sense, right? Because the higher the antenna the, in terms of the game, okay, you are going to have a larger effective area, and hence, okay, we will be able to capture more incoming power. So basically, this is the quick discussion on the antenna effective area. Okay, so this is what we want to prove later on. Okay, so for any antenna, okay, the maximum directivity, okay, so this is actually the maximum directivity and maximum effective area. Okay, so this is actually the maximum effective area. They are fundamentally related by this equation. So this video, the objective is to prove this equation, okay, which I'm going to do on the following few slides to prove this equation here. So as I mentioned earlier on, lambda, okay, you can see from here, they actually affect the outcome of these two relationships. Okay, so where this lambda is actually the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave. Okay, so this means that higher directivity antenna in general will have a larger effective area. Okay, but the relationship, okay, you can see from this here, it actually also depends on the wavelength. Okay, so in summary, directivity actually focus on the concentration of radiate power. Okay, so this how much directivity is actually on how much concentration okay, on a certain so-called direction okay, based on the radiate power. The effective area actually focus on the amount of incoming power that you actually capture. Okay, so these two concepts are interconnected okay, with higher directivity. In general, they actually led to a larger effective area. As you can see from the relationship over here, okay, you can see that they are direct proportional. So, which means that, okay, if I'm going to increase the area, I'm also going to increase the directivity. So, this is what it means here. Okay, so both directivity and effective area, they are very important parameters, okay, for evaluating the antenna performance. Okay, so before I continue, guys, urge you to help me. If you have found this video to be useful, okay, before I derive the equation, okay, please help me okay, by like this video. When more guys actually have to like this video, this video will have a better chances to reach up to a larger audience. So guys, remember okay, to help me to press the like button if you find this video helpful. Again, urge for those who are new to this channel, okay, please support me by subscribing to this channel. Thank you so much. Let's come to the definition of this equation as I mentioned early on. So let's derive the relationship between directivity and also the maximum effective area okay, based on the geometrical arrangement over here. Okay, so antenna one, okay, so let's say that this antenna one serves as a transmitter, okay, while antenna two serves as a receiver. Okay, so this will be a transmitter antenna, this will be a receiver antenna. Okay, so the effective area and directivity okay, of each okay, are represented by this AT, AR, DT, and DR. Okay, so this will be T for transmitter. This will be the effective area okay, for the transmitter. This will be the effective area for the receiving antenna. And this will be the directivity for the transmitting and for the receiver respectively. Okay, so if antenna one were isotropic okay so basically if we still remember this is as a transmitter so now this transmitter antenna will be isotropic which means that they actually radiate power okay evenly at all direction okay which means that it radiate power density at a distant r okay so they will be governed by this equation here okay so basically you can see this reference here so this is actually the radiate power density okay so you can see the antenna Okay, basically, this is what we call the radiate power density. You can see that they are governed by this equation here. Okay, so PT is basically the total radiate power, okay, which is at the EIRP. Okay, so this is actually at the output of the antenna. This will be called the PT, and then this will be 4 pi. The R squared, the R will be the distance. Okay, so basically, this is an equation. Okay, you can see that the radiate power density is related okay, to the transmitting power and also indirect proportional to the so-called distance in between the transmitter and the receiver antenna. Okay, because of the directivity property of the antenna, okay, so its actual density is actually by this equation. Okay, so this is actually the so-called total. You can see that because of directivity, 
Okay, earlier on, I did mention that, let's say it's isotropic, okay, it will be by this equation. Okay, so basically, this is a very simple equation for antenna, transmitting antenna to be isotropic, okay, which means that the antenna for all direction. And because now we actually have a so-called directive antenna, let's say here. So therefore, the actual so-called density is governed by this equation. Okay, you can see that it's simply just this W0 multiplied by the directivity of the transmitter antenna. So therefore, I just need to enter this dt into this term. And this is how I arrive at this equation here. Okay, so next. Okay, so these two equations is actually what I obtained okay, on these two equations. Okay, so later on, I may need to use them. So I just put them on the over here first. Okay, the power that is actually collected by the antenna, okay, so which means that over here, okay, the power that is actually collected by the receiver antenna, okay, and then transfer to the load, okay, will be by this equation here. Okay, so you can see that this is actually what I mentioned earlier on. This will be the total transmit from uh, this equation here. Okay, I put it here. Okay, so this is actually what we have calculated earlier on. Okay, so this is the actual power density. Okay, so you can see that if I'm going to calculate the receiving power, this will be the actual power density multiplied by the effective area of the receiver antenna. Okay, so basically, as I mentioned here, you just need to multiply the AR. Okay, because the WT will be in this form, you can see that I just multiply by the AR here. So I can rearrange the formula. Okay, so basically, you can see that I rearrange DTAR. So I, I need this term here. So I put this PT. Okay, and this, uh, how to say, it, okay, we, we just want to concentrate on the PR. So we do a cross multiply. Okay, so PR multiplied by 4 pi R squared. And we have this PT because we need to move this term to the left. Okay, so this is what we just rearrange the formula. Okay, so next. Okay, so this is a formula that is uh on over here. Okay, so now let's say the antenna 2 will be used as a transmitter. While the antenna one earlier on is a transmitter, now they actually behave as a receiver now. Okay, so and the uh, whatever medium they are linear, they are passive, and they are isotropic. And again, okay, we can rewrite the equation. Okay, because this is a transmitter, now they become a receiver. So I take the receiver gain of the directivity of the receiving antenna. Same here. So earlier on, this is actually the effective area. Okay, for the receiver, now it will be the effective receiving area for the transmitter. And you can see that the equation is the same. So with this, I actually conclude that DTAR is equal to DRAT, correct? So basically, this equation, they are equal because these two terms, they are exactly the same. And I just rearrange the formula as such over here. Okay, so from here, you can see that if we increase the directivity of the antenna, we also increase the effective area, okay? So because this number, let's say, we keep it so-called constant. If I increase the directivity, Therefore, in order to have a constant number, I also need to increase my effective area. So this is what you want to say. Okay, so over here, next. Okay, so I will make it them maximum. So where ATM and ARM, okay, so and also the D0 T and D0 R, let's make them the maximum effective area. Okay, so this will be the maximum effective area okay, for both the transmitter and also the receiver. And also the maximum directivity okay, for both the transmitter and also the receiver okay, of antenna 1 and 2 respectively. Okay, so this is will be the new equation. Okay, so I just want to increase until they are max. And therefore, I will have this equation. From here, this is what I mean. I increase them until they are max. And therefore, I will have this equation. Okay, so next. Okay, so this is the equation I, I have fit uh, on my previous page. Okay, so again... Okay, if now the antenna 1 is actually isotropic, then this maximum D0 T will be still equals to 1. And its maximum effective area, therefore, can be expressed as this equation here. Okay, from here, this will be become 1. Okay, so this will become 1, and I do a cross multiply. Okay, so therefore, this actually change the uh, so-called their, their equation. They just replace each other. And therefore, I have another equation here. Okay, so this equation actually states that the maximum effective area, okay, so this is the maximum effective area of an isotropic source, okay, so this is a transmitting antenna, and the transmitting antenna is an isotropic antenna, so they are actually equals to the ratio of the maximum effective area, okay, to the maximum directive of any other source, so this is another set of new equation, 
Okay, so let's say the receiver antenna, okay, they are very, very short, okay, for a dipole antenna, okay, so which means that the length of the dipole antenna, okay, they are very, very small as compared to the wavelength of the, of the frequency that you actually use. Okay, so the maximum effective area of a short dipole area, okay, they will be related by this equation. Okay, so maybe later on I will show this, how to prove this equation, and we know that the maximum directivity is actually equals to 1.5. Okay, so from here, I actually can replace the equation here. Okay, so my ARM, okay, now I know that they will be equal to 0 0.119 lambda squared, which is over here. And the maximum directive will be equal to 1.5. And from here, I can calculate that the maximum effective area of the isotropic source, which is by this equation here. Okay, so again, okay, so this will be the equation that I mentioned earlier on. And again, I rearrange the formula. Okay, I put this effective okay, area, maximum effective area of the receiver. Okay, if I do this, this will be multiplied together. And therefore, from here, DOR, okay, which is here. And this is ATM from here. And from here, you can see that I have successfully okay, proved the equation over here. So in general, okay, the maximum effective aperture, okay, which means the receiving uh, area, of an any antenna is actually related to its maximum directivity by this equation here. Okay, so from here you can see that I have successfully proved this equation. Okay, so this is actually the maximum effective aperture okay, at the receiving side, okay, which is related to the maximum directive by this equation here. Okay, so with this, I like to end my discussion. Okay, please help to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you so much for your song support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.